both groups of people came to see Jesus, the newborn king. First came the lonely ones, shepherds. They saw an amazing spectacle core of angels in the sky telling them that, that the Savior had been born in Bethlehem. So, and they went and worshiped God's son. And then, later, the lofty ones came. A band of wealthy, stargazing men from the east came, stopping in Jerusalem, forced to ask where the king of the Jews had been born. By the time they got to Jerusalem, there might have been quite a group that joined the caravan. There might have been dozens of camels, horses, and other travelers, all making the journey together. And what a sight that will have been. as the king of the Jews. So the news that there was another king born somewhere really bothered him. It not only bothered him, it really made him mad. King Herod might have sent out some spies to follow the wise men to Bethlehem to see what they were up to. And to see who they might find. Amos, wake up, wake up, Amos, wake up. <coughs> what, Josiah, what do you want? Wake up, Amos, this is important. <coughs> it's the middle of the night, what could be so important? It's the king, King Herod. What about the king, is something wrong? He can't sleep. You woke me up to tell me that. This is serious, the king Herod is extremely upset. So? He, well, he needs our help. Our help, a couple of orphan boys, let's say in his stables, what can we do? Well, the traveler that came through the gates today, where's the stargazers from the east? Did you see them? How could I have missed them? There must have been a hundred of them in the caravan. 
Yes, but do you know why they wanted to see King Herod? No, I didn't hear that part. They claimed that the that the star led him to the king of the Jews. Excellent. So they found him, King Herod the Great, king of the Jews. No, that's a problem. These men weren't seeking king. They sent were he seeking Herod. They claimed that there was a child born recently who would become the true king of the Jews. Uh oh. Did they find the child? No, not not here in Jerusalem. The the king called the priests together and asked if they knew anything about this. Did they? Yes. Apparently, the child. The, the prophets predicted that the child like this would be born and that he would be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem? That's only five miles from here. Exactly. What can you and I possibly do about any of this? Be King Herod's spies. What? He wants us to be his spies. How? At first, like, the caravan will leave the city to our final journey to the place we hope to find the boy king. We're supposed to slip into the... Caravan, hopefully, if anybody noticing, and see if they, these foreigners find what they're looking for. And if they do find what they're looking for? They come back to Jerusalem and we give a report to the king. Oh. I've already packed you a bag. We have to go to blend in with the caravan as it leaves, and, and that could be any time after dawn. All right, let's do this.
do you think it will be until we leave? Some of the travelers just started to wake up and get ready. It could be any time now. Josiah, how hard do you think it will be for us to just join the caravan? Maybe not as hard as it sounds. Lots of travelers join the caravan along the way. And it's the safest and fastest way to travel long distances, you know? What if they ask us where we're going or what we'll be doing there? Just say we are going east to uh, buy goods for our father's business. Our father? We don't have fathers or mothers. I know, but we could pass as brothers, right? I guess, but what if they charge us a fee to, to join the caravan? What will we do, what will we do then? Um, the team is taking care of that. Josiah, that's gold. Pure gold. You have to pay if you're a bribe guide. And enough to build a palace. We're supposed to use this for our mission, Amos. Oh. So we, be, we will be rewarded for a successful mission. So, so some of this could be ours. And this for a quick trip to Bethlehem? This must be our lucky day. I don't know about luck, but I do know what happened when, peop when people failed the king. Josiah? Yes? Do you think that it could be true that the real king of the Jews has been born in Bethlehem and that we're so close? Well, I've been thinking about that. Remember that story, that crazy story those shepherds tell about the angels in the sky and one angel telling them that the Son of God has been born? It was a pretty outrageous story. Yes, but somehow I believe them. I believe, I, I believe. I don't know why, but I believe their stories were true.
Martha? Yeah? Look at those two boys over there. Okay, what about them? Do they look familiar to you? No, not at all. They don't look familiar to me either. So, what's the problem? It's just that I wonder, when did they join the caravan? I didn't see them pay the guide or anything, and they don't seem to be traveling with adults. I hadn't noticed. I have noticed, however, it seems we'll be leaving soon for Bethlehem. Why don't you ask Papa about these boys? Maybe he knows something. I don't want to bother Papa. Maybe I'll just go over? Hannah, no. You know what Papa says about talking to strangers. Yeah, but they look about our age. What could be the harm? Just making friends. Hannah! Hello. Hi. Hello. You two are new on this caravan, aren't you? Uh, yes, we joined last night. Yeah, we joined last night. Are you two stopping in Bethlehem or are you going further? Uh, we're I'm going further. Oh, really? Oh, this is my sister, Martha. Hello. So, how far are you going? Uh, how far? We're not sure. We're just kind of not sure. Right. We may be going all the way to, uh, uh, Rome. Rome? Rome. Wow, that's a long way. In the other direction. Yeah, we thought we'd, we thought we'd go to Bethlehem and find another caravan going to Rome, which I know is in the other direction. But I gotta start somewhere, right? Yeah. Are your parents going to Rome too? Parents? You do have parents, don't you? Oh, sure. Got two of them, in fact. A mother and a father. Yeah, but they're not going with us. They said we could go by ourselves. Josiah? Well, okay. Hope you have a good trip. You too. That was close. I hope we get to Bethlehem soon. Me too.
Finally, the wise men were about to travel their last few miles, and those traveling with them could see that these men were, though tired from the journey, were excited about what they were about to discover. All along they had a star to show them the way, and now it was moving again, leading them to Bethlehem. Do you see that? See what? That, the star in the sky. Is that what it is? Yes, Papa says it is. But it's morning, daytime. Stars don't shine in the daytime. This one does. I tell you, stars don't shine in the daytime. This one does. Oh, hello, sorry, we were just saying. You were just talking about the star, weren't you? Folks, really a star? My papa says so. It, he says that those men, the ones traveling from the east, have been following it for many months. They followed a star? Can you even do that? Papa says so. Papa says that they believe the star will lead them to a child, a child who is to become the king of the Jews. King of the Jews? Oh, well, we don't know anything about that. Sure you do, Josiah. That's why. Amos. What? You do? You know about this king? Uh, no. Amos was just saying that. Yeah, I was just saying that we'd heard rumors in Jerusalem. That's all really just rumors. Oh, hey. Looks like we're moving again. Yeah, rest time must be over. Oh, good. Uh, Amos, when we get to Bethlehem, we need to make sure to stay close to those men. What men? Those wise men. We're supposed to follow them to find the king. Oh, yeah. Do you think they know where they're going? I say the answer is in the stars.
have you decided to go further, or will you stay here in Bethlehem? Yeah, are you two don't go into Rome? I think we're going to stay here for a while. Yeah, we have some business to take care of. Business? What kind of business? Well, actually, we're not supposed to tell anybody, but we're here on King's business. Yeah, we work for King Herod. Really? I hear he's a very cruel man. Yeah, I hear he can't sleep well at night because he's afraid someone will betray him and take over his throne. That's true. You have no idea. Then what kind of business are you doing for such a man as Herod? Well. 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 Amos, I think these men found something. Really? What men? Found what? Ladies, I'm sorry, but we have to go now. Uh, yes, we have some work to do. Goodbye. Have a nice journey. Well, that was rude. Yeah, it's sounds. It sounds like they got their manners from the master, the King Herod. It sure does. The star that had led the way suddenly stopped moving, and stayed lit over a house in Bethlehem. When, when they saw it. The wise man was so excited. Inside the holy house, the men found what they'd been searching for. They found the child. The savior. The king.
Professor, what do we do now? What do you mean, Amos? We go back to Jerusalem and tell the king what we saw. But, but you know what Herod will do when King Herod will do when he finds out. Yes, I know, but he won't be happy about this. That's putting it mildly. But it's not our worry, Amos. We 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 did what we're supposed to do. We followed the wise men until they found the, the child and report back to King Herod. I'm not going back, Josiah. What? I'm not going back to Jerusalem. But why not? Why not? Why not? Well, when I saw those men giving expensive gifts to the to the child and his mother, and then saw them worshiping the child, I realized I realized what? That he's the one, the one our ancestors have been waiting for. He he's the one that will save us all. But I, and I can't turn him over to Herod. You. I'm going to stay here, Josiah, and I, I want to be near him. I want to make sure he's all right. You have a responsibility to our king. I know, but Herod is not my king. This child is. You, what will you what will you do here? How will you live? I don't know. Here, take some of the of this gold. I'll I'll tell King Herod that we had to, that we had to spend some on the dirt to join the caravan. He he'll never know. I don't need Herod's gold. Well then give it to the child as an offering, like the wise men did. The child doesn't need any more gold. Josiah, and he certainly doesn't want an offering that I stole or costs me nothing. But think of the reward we are sure to get from Herod, he promised. I don't want his reward. I want what this king has. You're brave, Amos. I have to say that for you, much braver than I can imagine. You have to be brave too, Josiah, and go do what you, what you have to do. thousands of miles and years away from that place called Bethlehem. But sometimes we need to go back to or first come to a place just like that. A place to start on a journey of faith, a kind of Bethlehem of our own. You may be there now. Will you keep going and pass it by or will you stay and worship the king? Bethlehem maybe won't so far away after all. Just a simple man and wife Somewhere in the dark His words cut the silent night Take my hand For the child that you carry is God's own And though it seems the road is long We're not that far from Bethlehem Learn to live our days 
Lois, Josiah, Hannah, and Martha are fictitious characters, but they're inside a real story, a real story found inside the Bible. The Bible goes on to say that even though Herod tried to destroy Jesus as a child, Jesus grew up to become a man. And then others tried to take Jesus' life, even though he never did anything wrong. But Jesus did die. His life was a gift, a perfect sacrifice, as an act for forgiveness for all our sins. And then he came back to life so that we could live life forever with the Father in heaven. Maybe you're at a crossroads, like these characters trying to decide whether to do what you want or what the Lord is calling you to do. It does take faith, a faith that you demand full surrender. What will you give to the king?
Wow, what a great, what a wonderful musical presentation of Christmas by you guys. You were great. And Brandy, stand up for a minute, please. <laughs> Brandy Klein, thank you. Have a little um, presentation, Brandy. You can stand up again, okay? You probably, your knees are broken right now, but a little gift they want to give you. Brandy, from all of us, from all of the parents, from all of the kids, um, we just want to say thank you. You have worked, and you always work, so hard with these kids. And we know that you allow God to use you in a way that is just incredible. Um, you are sharing the love of Christ and the message of Christmas with not only these children, <laughs> um, but then with all the entire congregation as a result, and people all over the country watching <laughs> these kids perform. So we just thank you for allowing God to use you, and um, we pray that he would bless you. Wow, all, all, of, all of this month really has been connected to Bethlehem and tonight and today. Uh, how far is it to Bethlehem? What a great, great message there, too. Um, I just want to reread Micah 5 2 to you. It says, But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrata, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel whose coming forth is from old, from ancient of days. You know, I, I see a lot of things in this passage, but one of the things I see that perhaps we don't see on most Christmases uh, when we read this passage kind of out of context, uh, I, I just want to share that with you now, and it's this, that nothing, nothing can stop God's plan. That's what I see here. You know, earlier this year we did a series on the minor prophets, and and if you remember any of that, you remember that Micah had a had a very sad message. His main message was a sad one for the people, because of their sin against God that they wouldn't stop doing. God was going to send judgment on the nation, on Judah. He was sending the Assyrians. That's the main message of Micah. So even though God's people were going to be under siege, and even though their defeat, Micah says, was certain, you know, and inevitable, God still had a great plan in mind, a life-saving plan, you might say. But that plan centered on a very little town in Judah called Bethlehem. And it really was a little town. It was so small that many times it didn't even make a list when they, when they mentioned the towns of Judah. Uh, it was unknown. It was obscure. And yet from that little place, that little place the Bible says that out of you shall come forth for me one who shall be ruler in Israel forever. Now, this month, as I said, we've been studying this town and we've seen that even from the very beginnings, God had his thumbprint on this town. Uh, the first time, every time it's mentioned in Scripture, there's some way, prophetically or whatever, that it points to that day when Jesus was going to be born. The first time we saw Bethlehem was back in Genesis in the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob and his wife, Rebecca, uh, were, were coming into Bethlehem, Rebecca being pregnant. Kind of odd, right? A, a pregnant woman coming into Bethlehem and having a baby as soon as she got there. That sounds familiar. And that baby uh, was renamed by, by Jacob, the son of my righteousness. Ding. And then later on, we didn't even uh, cover this one because we didn't have enough time. Bethlehem comes up again, and we hear about Naomi, who was from Bethlehem. And she had a a daughter-in-law named Ruth who came back to Bethlehem and married a Bethlehemite. Uh, and, um, and Boaz and Ruth had, had children, and, the, and their offspring eventually, out of their offspring, was born a son named Jesse. 
That picks up the story from last week when Jesse had eight sons born in Bethlehem and the youngest of whom was David who became the great king of Israel and, uh, and, the, line, and the line of the Messiah. But by the time of Micah, the, the prophecy of Micah, Bethlehem had largely been forgotten again, this little town, and yet God said he still had plans through Bethlehem. There shall come forth for me one is to who is to be ruler in Israel, and not just a king. The Bible says in verse 2, one who's coming forth is from old, from the ancient of ancient days. The Hebrew word ancient really means everlasting. God says, I'm going to bring a ruler out of Bethlehem. That ruler is not just any ruler. He's speaking about his son, Jesus. Nothing can stop God's plan. Israel's disobedience couldn't stop God's plan. Bethlehem's obscurity couldn't stop God's plan. The centuries and centuries of waiting could never stop God's plan. And for you and I, nothing can stop God's plan for us because of what God has done. Nothing. We see that so beautifully in the way God sent his son, the way God identified his son ahead of time. Uh, this one verse in Micah that I read, uh, it dialed it right in where he would be born to this very little town in Bethlehem. And then there was a star that the wise men saw and the angels to the shepherds. Uh, in so many ways, God pinpointed where his son, the Messiah, was to be born. You know, I'm pretty sure that some of you are pretty con confused in your life right now about some things that are going on. There's big question marks up ahead, whether it be medical diagnoses or, or uh, problems in your family or, or job-related issues. You know, just what am I doing with my life? These are the kind of issues that, that sometimes when we're in the middle of those, God seems so distant. The little town of Bethlehem is a reminder that God has a plan and a purpose even when we can't see it. Even when it's hidden, if you come to him, if you come to the child of Bethlehem, Jesus, the Savior, and you trust him to help you with whatever, he will help you. When God seems distant, when you think God has forgotten, God knows your biggest needs. He knows your problems and nothing can stop his plan. That's what I see in this text today. When you know Jesus Christ as your savior, when you bow down to him, even though God may seem distant as you go through some problem, he's there and he'll give you hope and help through his son Jesus. Would you bow your heads with me as we close today? I wanna pray for you and me Father in heaven, how we thank you for Jesus and for Bethlehem that reminds us that no one and no place is beyond your ability to notice. Lord, when we seem small and when we feel like we're forgotten and when we think that you're far away from us, Lord, thank you that you see us, you know us, you hear us, and you care for us, Lord. Then, Father, I pray for those in this room today, those who are watching, perhaps online, who have never trusted Jesus as their Savior. Please, Lord, show them, show them Jesus right now and how much you love them. Your word says you demonstrated your love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, while we're far away from you, while we're disconnected from you, you died for us. Christ died for us. Jesus, thank you so much that he died on the cross in place of our sins. And he promises, and he still promises today, that if we simply call on him, he'll give us the gift of eternal life. I just want to say to you today, if you need to call on him today, he's listening. He will hear your prayer. If you'll put your faith in Christ, he will give you everything that you need and so much more, beginning with forgiveness of your sins. He will help you and be with you. So 
I'm going to pray a prayer, and you can pray it yourself. You can just whisper it to God as I pray it out loud. Just ask him. Just ask him, and he'll hear you as I pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you, God, that your message is simple enough for a child to understand and proclaim, and yet it's profound enough that the greatest minds have never plumbed its depths. And Lord, thank you that it came for each one of us individually. Lord, give me your gift of eternal life, please. Pray that prayer to him. Jesus, give me your peace right now. Save me from my sins. Forgive me, God. I trust you, Jesus. And Jesus, I will follow you. For I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, I hope you'll tell someone, tell your neighbor, tell me. Uh, let someone know that you can begin a journey with God that, that really won't be a one-day thing, that's for sure. It'll be a lifetime uh, experience of joy and help and hope and peace. Thank you again, guys. You were great. You really were. Why don't we all stand and we'll be dismissed. Hope you have a great day. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you that, as the scripture says, even a child shall lead them, and they led us today into, into your throne room to worship you. Now go with us as we all go. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.